I'm here today to demonstrate some pencil drawing techniques using some of the great products that are currently in the art sale available online and in store. Firstly I'd like to mention the work we've done in all Hobbycraft stores to keep the stores safe for our colleagues and customers. Please take a look at our website to find out all the details. Recently I was offered an amazing opportunity as a Hobbycraft artisan to create a pack of fat quarters to be sold in all Hobbycraft stores and online. They consist of five different designs and are based around the theme Tropical Leopard. Here are the original paintings so you can see the characters that are in the pack. So far I've only made a face mask but I thought that was available and good for the current climate and a cosmetic bag that you can see here. They're now available online and are rolling out to stores as we speak and over the next few weeks. I'm now going to show you a few techniques using two different sets of pencils. Both the pencils are from the Derwent collection. So we're going to first use the colouring pencils and then the ink tense pencils. I've prepared some drawings already that I've done recently to show you what the pencils can do. So we've got this copy here. I really like the depth in this. The colour range that you get within these pencils, I'll just show you, is really good. So you get a real selection of all different shades. So the greens that you get is amazing, um, which is really good for what we're going to be doing today. So what I'd like to do today is show you how to create this set of leaves here. So first I'm going to take the sort of olive green, that one? yep, olive green, and just, it's really important to keep the outlines really light so that you've not got heavy detailing. So just doing a quick, a quick loose drawing so that it can change as you go because you might decide to add bits in or eliminate some areas. So then what we're going to do is quickly fill in with the, the same shade. Still keeping the, the consistency the same, the smoothness. This is quite a smooth sketch pad, so it's quite good for this, but obviously the different sketchbooks that are available will create different techniques. So that's the first layer on. I'm going to use this more vibrant colour, which is the lime green, just to give a sense of highlight on these edges. Patterns in nature, nothing's ever symmetrical and there's often lots of highlights and shadows so it's good to be able to capture those. And this, this range of Derwent colours really has so many good colours in it that you, it enables you to do that. I'm now going to use a different green just to give some more depth. So again it's just creating those shapes and textures within there. You can just keep going like this until you're happy with what you've created. You could create something more realistic or something more imaginative. Just depends what you want to do. There's also this darker green that I'm going to use now. This really helps to give some shapes and textures. I'm going to add in some unusual markings there. That's something you might find or as I say, nature has got all different shapes and patterns. Okay, and you just keep going like that till you're happy and you could add in some florals using all the different colours we've got here. The oranges and the things there. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to show you is the ink tent pencils. Again, they are with the Derwent collection. It's a smaller set, but you do um, still get a variety of colours. And the good thing about the watercolour pencils is that you can blend them so then you can build new colours um, and experiment with those. So sorry, I'm just going to find the drawings I've done. Sorry about this. There we go. So I've created these butterfly wing outlines here. Just three stages to show you the different things that we can do with these pencils. So the first stage is how the pencil goes on the page before adding any water at all. I'm just going to show you. They're really good, these. You get a really strong pigmentation with them and the colour stays really true. If anything, it goes more vibrant, which is lovely. I'm just going to quickly show you how it changes. It really fascinates me how 
it just goes from being such a, a textured look to such a smooth look. And what you can also do is use the excess paint here to just paint freely. You don't have to always put the colour down everywhere. So that's really a nice quality of them as well. Like that. The next step I'd like to show you is using something I've already done. So this is completely dry now. One quality of the Derwent pencils is you can work back in to a dry piece without it affecting the colour below. So I'm going to add some of this lovely purpley red. Give some butterfly textures there. Some shapes. And then what you can do is I'm going to use a smaller paintbrush now. These paintbrushes are also Hobbycraft paintbrushes. They're watercolour paintbrushes. And then you just go back in. And as you can see, it's not, not bleeding the colour below, it's not altering it at all. So that's really good. And then obviously you could let that this purple dry and then build back onto that with another colour. It is a good idea to start with your lightest colour first because it's harder to build the colour backwards from a darker a darker tone. So we do have a question. Okay. Uh, so Lynn is asking what paper are you using and what would you recommend for the use with these pencils? Okay, so this paper that I've got is a Hobbycraft sketchbook. It's the sea white one. I'll just show you quickly there. So it's the plain air sketchbook. It's a multimedia heavyweight paper this. So this has got quite a, a strong texture. Um, you could use a watercolour paper for this, which would probably respond the best to adding the water to it. But it would just depend on what texture you wanted. Um, you could use a really smooth one, which would give the look of it being painted on more or a textured one would keep the pencil markings there. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to show is how the pencils will react when you just apply these directly to water. So I'm going to do the same thing as I just did a second ago. And wet this, bringing that lovely colour out. Just trying to get quite a lot of water on this one just to show you what what I'm wanting to with these these other pencils. I really love the look that they give that they're such such like you painted but you get that that added texture with them as well. And it's really fast as well. It's they're really good for getting a lot of colour in quickly if you want to or if you went slower, you could build in a lot of detail with them as well. So that's there. So I've got the teal green, which is quite a dark shade, and I'm going to just draw in with that there. Hopefully you can see this on the on the camera. And you can see how the, the colours just bleed out into the water, which just provides a totally different texture and look to the drier one there. So you could keep going with that, and then you could, so I'm going to change up into the red colour, which is adding sort of depth to the painting. And you could just draw in with it. It's really smooth when you're going over. It's quite a weird, a weird feeling because the pencil's then wet. It's a bit strange, but it does, and then it's, the paper start to dry a bit there, so you can see it changing back to sort of the waxy, more waxy texture before you then you could go back over it with the water. And that again has created a different colour to there and a different texture. And then if you didn't like that you can easily just go back into it and you could even blend the colour out, let that dry and you could probably pull it back over again. There's a lot of um, options with these pencils. I think they're really versatile. So we've got a couple of other artisans watching, Emma and Vicky. Okay, hi. Uh, and Emma has asked, um, what art materials did you use to create your fabric designs? Okay, so my fabric designs were created, I'll just move these wet things out of the way. 
so these are gouache this is gouache that i've used to create this it actually reminds me a little bit of the ink tense pencils because it's that really flat pigment pigmented color um and so i kept them really simple flat colors just two color designs normally i'd work quite a lot busier than this but i felt it was most appropriate for the the designs i was making and the product that it was going to be um and then i've got some more here just i sort of did a lot of motifs just to decide what would fit best in them as you can see that is the you know, the yellow and the red leaves there and this is bristol board sea white bristol board which is really smooth um, and gives that real flat um high pigmentation color okay so that is the end of my demo i hope you've enjoyed watching this as i said you can buy both of these online or in store so i'll just remind you recap what we've used we've used the ink tense pencils which are the watercolor pencils and we've also used the derwent academy color pencils you can buy these in a watercolor version as well and um, so that might be worth a look at them a bit probably in between the ink tents and the color pencils maybe um, and Vicky's also asking, uh, she said, Beth, is that your fabric behind you? And is it in stores now? Oh, yeah. So it is in this store. It arrived this morning, which is an amazing surprise. Um, I'm not sure if it's in every store. You'll have to check locally. But it is available online now. So you can head to our website and find it there.